Welcome back, Netrunner fans, to part two of my old Hollywood review. In this section, we're going to be looking at all of the Corp cards that are in the pack. The first card that we're going to look at is a new asset for HB. This is called Ronald 5. It's 3 to res, 3 to trash, it's also 3 influence. He's unique, and he's a bioroid. Whenever the runner trashes a Corp card, including him, he or she loses a click. The first thing that needs to be said is something I've pointed out with a lot of cards like this one. A lot of the best trash effects, the ones that trash the most cards, like Noises Ability, for example, involve the Corp trashing their own cards. So that's not going to do anything with Ronald 5. Another important thing to point out is that Ronald 5 doesn't make that additional click a cost. You just lose the click. So in other words, if you don't have any clicks, this isn't going to affect you. So both of those are definitely massive limitations on the playability of this thing. A lot of the HB decks have been running the Breaker Bay Grid sort of thing. So most of the time when they have a lot of cards installed, most of those cards are installed in one server. So that's going to make it so that you can run through get through the ice or whatever, and then trash all of those cards in a server. And if you have no clicks, this isn't going to do anything against you. I will point out that like with hostile infrastructure, this is going to tax them when they trash your ice. So this isn't just going to be, you know, your standard trashable assets or upgrades. You're also going to be able to get some value if they're trashing your ice, which I think virtually every deck does. I don't know, I feel like I'm really stretching to try to make this card good. I don't know how much play this is really going to see. This seems like the type of thing that might make more sense in the future if we see more how many clicks the runner has oriented stuff. Next up we have a new piece of ice for HB. This is Enforcer 1.0. It's 1 to res 5 strength and it's 2 influence. It's a Century Bioroid Destroyer AP. Oh my. As an additional cost to Res Enforcer 1.0, the Corp must forfeit an agenda. The runner can click through it because it's a Bioroid. And then it has four subroutines. Trash one program, do one brain damage, trash a console, and trash all virtual resources. In some ways, we could think of this as the Bioroid Archer. It's cheap to res, it's got fairly high strength, and it's got a bunch of nasty subroutines. But you have to forfeit an agenda to get it resed. Now, my initial reaction to this is that it's honestly just not that strong. But I do think that I've come up with a few things that are going to make it playably good. First of all, I want to talk about why I don't think it's that good. Why can you click through this thing? It seems to me like that's a massive limitation on the power level of this. And the fact that it has a subroutine, kind of like Archer has a subroutine, that really just doesn't do that much. Trashing all virtual resources. We have seen a lot of good virtual resources lately. You know, stuff like Gang Sign and Spoilers and all of these when the corpse scores type effects are all virtual resources. But in general, the game just doesn't have that many. So it's not going to do a lot in, in a huge number of situations. I think that's just going to be a dead subroutine. The one brain damage isn't really that punishing either. So realistically, you could run into this, and as long as you have two clicks, you could get past the two nastiest things, which are the program and the console. That sounds a lot like Ichi to me, and the big difference is that it's five to res with no uh, cost of forfeiting an agenda. So my initial reaction was to be a little underwhelmed with this, but I do have some pretty good uses for it that I think are going to make it reasonably playable in the right HB build. The first thing I want to point out is that lately we've seen a lot of people talking about Marcus Beatty in HB. It's really common to include him with the next gold just because of the brutal subroutines associated with that. And this potentially has another set of really mean subroutines that you could choose from with Beatty. Being able to trash a console with Beatty seems pretty strong to me. Being able to trash a program is always good. 
So in general, I think this is another enabler for Beatty if you were already doing that kind of thing in your deck. Another thing that's worth pointing out is that HB has some of the best ways in the game to avoid paying the cost of their ice. So we have accelerated beta test, you know, just a three for two agenda. Hitting this on a beta test seems really strong to me. We also have some funkier tools like Eliza's Toy Box or Bioroid Efficiency Research. Both of those would make this free in the sense that you wouldn't have to forfeit an agenda. And that makes this a lot stronger. Pretty much all of the stuff I was just whining about with this card goes away if you don't have to forfeit an agenda. If you're able to res this with one of these alternative methods, this seems like a much stronger choice. A 5 strength sentry with 4 subroutines is going to be extremely expensive to run through, especially on a server that you're planning on running multiple times. So I think that this is going to find a role in the game that's pretty different than Archer. Archer is usually like a monster thing that you're playing a lot of times on a remote trying to establish a server that's really difficult for the runner to get through. This to me seems more like a big taxing type ice. It seems more like the type of thing where you're going to put it on a central to try to make the runner have to spend just an enormous amount of credits getting through this. I think this is an interesting design. I like this overall. I think that it's a little weak if you don't have some of these methods I was just talking about to res it for free. But I think it's going to be pretty easy to accommodate that. And in the right build, this could be pretty strong. Next up, we have a new piece of ice for Jinteki. It's a trap. It's two to res, zero strength, and it's three influence. It's a trap type ice, unsurprisingly. Whenever it's a trap is exposed due to net damage, it has one subroutine, the runner trashes one of his or her installed cards trash it's a trap this card has got me pretty worked up i'm going to first talk about some of the ways that i think it might see a little play and then i'm going to go on a big rant about how i hate this card so first of all the anti-exposed thing that's going to be pretty good against like silhouette or snitch or just recurring expose effects it might also make sense in like pe because a lot of times we want to expose PE's ice before we run it because we're worried that we might get flatlined by some really nasty ice. So that, I think, maybe could matter. Now, this subroutine, the runner is going to get to choose the card. So this is really going to be contingent on them having very few cards installed or having only really good cards installed. Again, PE gets into that situation fairly routinely. It's reasonably common for a runner to install a Century Breaker and then make some runs against PE because they can break all of the nastiest stuff they might encounter. This is potentially a way to foil that. The reason I'm disappointed with this thing is that I want to see more powerful and good trap-type ice, and I feel like so many of them have been really weak. I thought Kisune was a step in the right direction. It had a subroutine that was pretty high impact. This thing is very game context driven. It's just not going to be good in a lot of situations. It's kind of expensive at two. And the anti-expose thing is pr just seems so out of place with this thing. I mean, I get that it's kind of thematically good. But you're, I don't think you're going to want to play this card in your deck to deal with expose effects. It would have been so much cooler if they put that anti-expose thing on a more generally playable card. Like an end the run piece of ice or a piece of ice that dealt damage or just something that was a little more generally playable. As it is, I don't really see this being good enough. Pretty much everybody's got AI breakers. They're going to be able to break this thing for basically nothing. The expose effect's going to do nothing. And in general, I think this is just too low impact. I would really like to see some better trap type ice. And I really don't think that this is going to be good enough to really affect PE's playability or really do anything for the role of trap type ice in the metagame. Next up is a new operation for Jinteki. This is an offer you can't refuse. It's four to play and it's three influence. 
choose a central server, the runner may initiate a run on that server, during which he or she cannot jack out. Otherwise, add it to your score area as an agenda worth one point. This is a pretty cool design, and I'm hoping that it'll end up being good enough. It's really expensive, but it incentivizes something I think that the game really needs, which is that if you want to convert scary ice and strong servers into points, you have to commit those ice onto remote servers. So in other words, you're using some of your scary taxing ice on a remote rather than a central. This is one of the few ways in Netrunner to convert your central server defense into points. It seems to me like there's going to be a fair amount of deck building required to make this thing work. It's really expensive, and you're going to have to already have access to a bunch of scary ice that's expensive to get through or does something nasty if they run into it. Now, Jinteki already has all the net damage ice. They also have stuff like Crick, so we definitely have stuff like that in Faction. It seems to me like this would be the absolute nastiest with the Bioroids, since the runner's not going to have any clicks to spend during this run, and the Bioroids tend to be really expensive to break and tend to have really nasty subroutines. I think that this card could potentially affect your scoring pattern if you were smart about it in a deck. Like, you could play all two-pointers and then hopefully score the odd point with this. Or alternatively, maybe play five for threes and try to get the odd point with this. This seems like a pretty interesting card. I could see it showing up in the right deck as like a two of. I, I'm really anxious to see what happens with this. It's really expensive. It's kind of clumsy. But it has a really interesting and unique effect. And this is just a really cool design. The next few cards that we have are all NBN cards. And one thing to keep in mind is this is right before we're going to get the big box for NBN. So in addition to this pack being fairly NBN focused, we're going to have a huge box of NBN stuff right around the corner. First up is a new ID for NBN. This is Harpsichord Studios Entertainment Unleashed. It's a 4515. It's a division. The runner cannot steal more than one agenda each turn. This is certainly a cool and interesting design. It's going to, first of all, play around some of the stuff that's really hurt NBN the most. So multi-access effects on R&D are going to be a little less effective with this ID because you're not going to just get totally blown out if they access two three for twos. It's also going to let you play down two agendas on two different remotes and they can only steal one of those. Also like if you put a bunch of agendas in archives or something they're only going to be able to steal one of those. All this is cool stuff. I like the different dynamics that this is creating for NBN. This is definitely going to be a different sort of style for them. It is worth noting that this gets defeated by the film critic we looked at in the last review. Since film critic doesn't actually steal the agenda you're going to be able to play around this ID ability pretty easily with Film Critic. I think this ID is going to be popular, at least right away, but I could definitely see us going back to Near Earth Hub ultimately. The extra card draw and influence seems like it might be better than this ability, but I think it's worth looking at the other cards that are in the pack before we totally write this off. Next up, we have a new NBN agenda. This is Award Bait. It's a 3 for 1, and it's a Sensi type. That's a new one. If a ward bait is accessed from R&D, the runner must reveal it. When the runner accesses it, you may put up to 2 advancement tokens on a card that can be advanced. This feels kind of like a throwback to me. In the core set, we had Matrix Analyzer, and then pretty soon after that, we got Shipment from Sansan, and it looked like we were going to have these advancement token oriented things as an NBN power. And over time it seemed like that's more migrated to Wayland with the advanceable ice and the stuff like that. Well now we're back with NBN with something that can put free advancement tokens on stuff. We have seen a few NBN cards that have some sort of ability if they're advanced a lot of times. Uh, we had reversed accounts 
a while back in Up and Over. That card I don't think has ever really seen play, but it certainly has an ability that's good enough, making the runner lose a bunch of credits, especially if you could get free advancement tokens on the card, is really cool. Also, we had Expose in the underway. I thought that card was pretty bad, and this new agenda is not swaying me on that at all. But we could see more of these advanceable things in NBN in the future. This is a reasonable 3 for 1. I think 3 for 1s are an area of the agenda mix where you could actually play something other than like Beal, Astro Script, NAPD. So I think that this could see a little bit of fringe play in NBN. Next up is a new 4 for 2 for NBN. This is Exploda Palooza. And that's really the name of the card. It's a Sensi type. If it's accessed from R&D, the runner must reveal it. When the runner accesses it, you may gain 5 credits. Here is perhaps a challenger or a complement to NAPD contract. It seems to me that if you're playing a mid-seasons oriented NBN deck, this seems like a pretty solid option. You're going to get the five credits you can potentially use on that trace. And, you know, NAPD contract has always fit well with that as well, since they have to, the runner has to spend for, kind of accomplishes the same goal. Another thing to point out with the midseason interaction is that NAPD has an additional cost, which means that the runner can decline to score it. Explodapalooza doesn't have an additional cost, so if they access it on R&D or something like that, they're going to have to steal it, and that's going to open them up to getting mid-seasoned. Another way that this might be better than NAPD is if you have some way to prevent the runner from scoring it outside of this card. So, like, if you're playing Harpsichord Studios, this might be pretty cool if they run into it and they've already stolen an agenda this turn. Now you're gaining five, and they can't even steal it. There's another card in this pack that's also going to assist with that. It's going to make it harder for them to steal. So I might bring this up again when we talk about that card. I don't know if this is really going to be good enough to play outside of anything but the mid-seasons, flatline-oriented NBN. But frankly, in the history of the faction, there's only been like two ways to play mid-seasons or the full-on fast advance, so we're not really paring it down that much by saying that we have to do a mid-season thing. Next up, we have a new asset for NBN. This is called Early Premiere. It's 0 to res, 2 to trash, and it's 3 influence. When your turn begins, you may pay 1. If you do, place an advancement token on a card that can be advanced in a server. Well, here's the quick reminder that in a server means not ice. Ice are protecting servers, so in a server is going to mean cards that are actually installed in those servers. I talked about a little bit earlier when we were talking about award bait, how advancement token-oriented stuff seems like an area of the NBN card pool that hasn't been explored a lot for a while. And here's another really interesting way to do that. This seems pretty powerful and pretty decent if you actually have a way to utilize that advancement token. The best thing that I can come up with to do with the advancement token is to score a 4 for 2 because you're able to play the 4 for 2 down as long as they don't run it. You'd be able to score it on the next turn if you early premiere and then advance it three times. That seems like the most powerful thing you can do with this. Now, there aren't a lot of insane 4 for 2s within NBN. We don't have any that really do a lot when we score them. So it's really just going to be like scoring NAPD or the Explodapalooza. But that's still pretty good. I could maybe see playing this out of faction just to score some of the more powerful 4 for 2s in the game. So like Nisei Mark II and Efficiency Committee both seem good enough in that regard. It's also maybe worth pointing out that you can have multiples of this going. So you could hypothetically score 5 for 3s or even larger agendas with this. This is an interesting new tool. It's only going to get better if we get more advanceable stuff within NBN. And I think this is a pretty cool and interesting design that's probably going to be good enough to see play. Next up we have a new operation for NBN. This is called Casting Call. 
It's zero to play. It's two influence. It's a condition. Install an agenda from HQ face up and install casting call on that agenda as a hosted condition counter with the text. Whenever the runner accesses an, this agenda, he or she takes two tags. This is a really, really sweet design. I think this is probably one of my favorite tag effects in Netrunner. This is just such a cool deterrent that is very game context driven and just has a really efficient sort of plan associated with it. I kind of think of this as like the NBN motion notion, uh, even though that's sort of a strained comparison. I really, really like the fact that you get to install the agenda with this as well. So you're not losing a click having to install this on top of the agenda after the agenda is already installed. You're getting to install the agenda. Now you do have to put the agenda face up, but how often is that really going to matter? I definitely see butcher shop decks looking at this card in the future. It seems like a nice way to try to force through agendas. Not only good agendas that have some sort of effect when we score them, but also agendas with nasty effects when the runner accesses them. And that's pretty much every single agenda that NBN has in those two categories. I also see this having quite a bit of potential in either Wayland or Jinteki. I think probably Wayland more than Jinteki. I've seen people mention this in Argus, and that seems pretty mean to me because Argus just adds that nasty effect to all of the agendas anyway. Plus, in most Argus decks, you're pretty likely to be playing dedicated response team, which really ramps up the power level of cast and call. So this is a pretty sweet card all around. I definitely think it's got some potential in any flatline-oriented deck, especially those with Scorched Earth. Next up, we have a new upgrade for NBN. This is called Old Hollywood Grid. It's 5 to res, 4 to trash, 2 influence. It's a region. Agendas accessed from this server cannot be stolen unless the runner already has a copy of that agenda in his or her score area. This applies even during the run on which the runner trashes Old Hollywood Grid. This is what Red Herrings wanted to be so bad. This is such a cool upgrade. I'm really, really a fan of this. I think that the corpse side of the game has needed more defensive upgrades that allow us to score big agendas. And this old Hollywood grid is absolutely that. It's too influenced, so you're going to be able to hypothetically play it uh, in place of maybe like Ash or something like that in a variety of decks. This definitely has some comparisons to Ash. It certainly has weaknesses versus Ash. Uh, it's more expensive to res. It's also a region so it's going to be competing with other regions in that server. But I also think that this is a little better than Ash, in the sense that it isn't just going to be a money war. This is going to necessarily defend your server just as long as you have five to res it. I really, really like the design of this. I really like the condition here that the runner already has to have a copy of that for it to work. That's so cool and really incentivizes big agendas like five for threes and things like that because you usually don't play a whole bunch of copies of those. This is definitely going to see play right out of the pack. It's expensive and I think it works best in glacier styles, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only place we're going to see it. I can certainly see some NBN decks like the butcher shop styles considering playing this thing. But I think in general, NBN is going to have too weak of an economy to really be supporting this thing that much. And especially if you're playing the sort of agenda packages that we've seen out of NBN uh, basically for all time, it's really likely that the runner is going to have another copy of some of these stolen, uh, especially out of R&D. So I don't see this being as good in the standard NBN styles that we've seen uh, up to this point. I definitely think this is a better card for a Glacier style deck, and unfortunately that I think that means not NBN. Next up we have a new 5 for 3 agenda for Wayland. This is Hollywood Renovation. It's an initiative and it's public, which means that you install it face up. Whenever you advance it, 
you place one advancement token on another card that can be advanced, or two, if there are six or more advancement tokens on Hollywood Renovation. Well, we're back to Waylon with the advancement token stuff, and this is a pretty interesting and potentially very powerful way to do that. Wayland's already got a lot of tools involving advancement tokens, especially the ice, which I think are good, but they've just really never seen that much play because the ID that they're kind of meant for is downright terrible. So I think that for those ice to really be good enough, you're going to need some effect kind of like this to be able to advance them. This potentially also works well with advanceable assets. We have Grendel Refinery, which could make us a ton of money, and we potentially have the reversed accounts I was just talking about or some other out-of-faction things that have big, powerful impacts as well. You've probably heard me on this channel talk a lot about Wayland Glacier, and outside of Blue Sun, We've never really seen a Wayland Glacier style be very effective, especially the order and chaos sort of Wayland Glacier with the advanceable ice and things like that. This is maybe a card that could push that deck a little closer to viability. I think one of the big weaknesses that a lot of the Glacier styles have, at least the ones that aren't good enough for tournament play, is that they don't have really good 4 for 2s and 5 for 3s. I think a huge difference between RP and something like the Advanceable Ice uh, Glacier style deck is that RP has really amazing agendas that very, very clearly accomplish its goals. It's got the best 5 for 3 in the game, which is Future Perfect, and it's got Nisei Mark II, which I would argue is the best 4 for 2 in the game. Now, Wayland Glacier generally doesn't have that, and even within Blue Sun, we're really Oaktown Renovation is the only like insanely powerful agenda that we're scoring. We don't have a lot of really good 5 for 3s. So I think this is a step in the right direction for that style. I think I, would, I just want to see more powerful 5 for 3s in the game, and this one has some really, really good effect. It requires some awkward setup, but I think if you build your deck around this card correctly, this could be a bomb. Next up, we have an operation for Wayland. This is Back Channels. It's zero to play, one influence. It's a transaction. Trash a card installed in a server and gain three credits for each advancement token on that card. I'm pretty sad that we can't trash our advanceable ice with this card, I think that that would have made it fit into the deck that I was talking about just a minute ago a lot better. But that said, I think there's still plenty of ways to use this card. I'm most interested in using this outside of Wayland, though. And at one influence, that's going to be pretty easily accomplished. The first thing I thought of with this card was Mushin Notion. You can Mushin Notion some random trap. It doesn't even have to be an advanceable card. You just happen to have three advancement tokens on it, and you can get rid of it and get nine money. That's really powerful in a Jinteki deck like a PE style, because those economies are usually really fragile. I could see this maybe seeing a little bit of play in Wayland. It's worth pointing out that it's a transaction, so it's going to give you a credit no matter what from the core set ID. It's been a long time since we've seen transactions. I'm kind of disappointed that we haven't seen very many of those. This is a cool card. I think it's going to see some fringe play. And this is just an interesting new tool to make some money for the corporation. The last card in the pack is a neutral agenda. This is a 6 for 4. And it's called Vanity Project. It's also 1 influence. And it has no abilities. I'm a bit conflicted on this thing. I really like the idea of 6 for 4, and just there being a neutral 6 for 4. I think the 1 influence requirement is cool and interesting as well. I'm just not sure why they chose to make this have no abilities. It seems to me like if you're going to score a 6 for 4, it's nice to get 4 points, but it, it's certainly worth getting more. I think the key to this thing is going to be making it not take 
three turns to score. The best way that I can come up with to do that is to use the Mushin Notion off the grid sort of thing. So you can play Chrissium Grid on your HQ and then use off the grid to defend the server that you Mushin. So if you Mushin this thing, you'll be able to just advance it three times the next turn and score it. That seems okay, especially since you'd only have to score a 5 for 3 after that, which you can use the same method. This is a cool addition to the game. I don't think it's overwhelmingly good, but I think it does have some long-term potential as we have more ways to score it easier or have more effects that interact with the four-point thing. That's going to do it for my old Hollywood review. This is a pretty sweet pack. I definitely appreciate the sort of flavor uh, considerations with this pack. There's a lot of movie quotes going on, lots of imagery of Hollywood. In general, I think this is a pretty sweet pack thematically. Mechanically, I think it's fair to say that the runner got the shaft. They didn't really get a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of funky tools that are going to maybe see some fringe play. Film Critic is definitely the big winner on the runner side. The Corp definitely got a lot of interesting new specialized tools that I anticipate seeing a fair amount of play. And I think in general, the trend for the Corp side of this pack was improved designs of agendas and just generally the right sort of philosophy for design. I think the big exception to that was just the it's a trap uh, piece of ice that I already ranted about. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please press subscribe and the button that looks like a thumbs up. And I'll see you again for some more Netrunner stuff.